So today we're taking a look at how to use perplexity to perform AI matchmaking, more specifically matchmaking for real estate, matching buyers and sellers. So without any further ado, let's get stuck in. By the way, hi, my name is Alex. And here on this channel, we talk about anything and everything, AI, low code, Airtable, databases, you name it, we do it. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get stuck in. So we're starting things off as we usually do with a very, very quick demo. Now, as you can see here, this is very reminiscent of a previous video that we've done that used Respell. Well, it's the same thing. So if you watch this one, this is a version 2.0. Essentially, it does the same thing, but it's much more efficient, much cleaner as an automation. Now, the way that it works, it's actually quite straightforward. If you haven't watched that video, this demo is for you. Essentially what we have, we have a search. So our contact John is looking for some properties within the $500, $3,000 price range. He's also looking for an apartment. And all I have to do is press this find matches, right? And we'll get the matched properties. Of course, this thing right now works on a trigger, but you can get it to work as soon as there is a new property in the list it can trigger as soon as there is a new search it can trigger whatever you know it's just a matter of deciding how you want this to work but for now just for demo purposes this is just you know triggered manually now i also have my list of properties needless to say it's just super straightforward we have got a property name an address and some applied attributes now the applied attributes are just another way that we like to do attributes for real estate properties or any kind of thing that might have tons of attributes and you don't want to create too many fields and you want the whole thing to kind of like work in a junction table style so yeah all i have to do is jump into my search press find matches and i'm just going to clear this the system is going to start up and it's going to find and match the properties to the search. There we go, property number two, because property number two is the only one that right now meets the criteria. Now, if I take property number three and turn this into an apartment, right? I can go ahead and run that search again. I'm gonna clear this. And now it should pick up on property number two and three. There you go. That's it, simple as that. Now, let's take a look at how the database is set up. Okay, so let's start with the database. Super straightforward, nothing crazy going on. We have our list of contacts, Mike and John, any contact can be related to properties because you can have a buyer who's also a seller and vice versa. In this case, Mike owns five properties and John is linked to a search, right? Because we wanna know if somebody is looking for a property, We create searches for that person because he might be interested in apartment in this price range but also a condo in a different price range basically the role of searches is to make sure that we have the scalability when it comes to performing searches for clients talking about searches we have a very straightforward table just a name where i'm just concatenating the word search with the search number space pipe space and the contact name really straightforward the search number, search number one. This is an auto number field. So again, nothing really crazy. We have a link back to our contacts. We have a strict requirements checkbox. Basically, this is a preventative measure for AI to take our applied attributes seriously. You can turn this off, but it might bring you things that are within your price range but it might not be an apartment or things that are slightly over your price range or lower than your price range so it's a bit of a fuzzy search so to speak we have our applied attributes which is a link to the applied attributes find matches this is our trigger for the automation a little search status text box and of course the matched properties which basically link back to properties Talking about properties, we have a very straightforward table. But let me just see what other fields you might need. You might need this, the matched searches. But other than that, we have a property name, an address, 
some applied attributes and we're going to talk about them in a sec and then we have our matched searches that is the link back from searches now applied attributes let's talk about this for a moment essentially applied attributes marries a property with a parameter we have some basic fields here min max value the evaluation and of course the type now depending on the parameter you need to fill out specific fields i hope that's clear but ultimately it all links back to that property as a set of attributes now i also took an extra step here to make sure that parameters are related to this attribute list table essentially i want to make sure that my list of parameters is not just a simple drop down hopefully that makes sense but yeah ultimately it's set up like so we have our parameter name just concatenating the parameter name because otherwise if you are bringing this in and we'll see that in the automation section if you're bringing this in as a link field it will bring the actual record id from that record we want just the name that's why i'm doing this particular trick here to concatenate what we see so that it actually brings the string into the automation that's basically it attributes list again nothing to really call home about yeah i think nothing else i think for this particular automation that's the design of the database now let's jump into the automation itself to see how that works all right so first things first you need to start with make.com if you haven't got a make account down in the description below there's a link that will also support the channel if you sign up through that link it's an affiliate link so yeah you need make once you've set up make jump in and create a new scenario and the first thing that you need to do is create a webhook module now as soon as you do that you need to copy the address to clipboard this little address over here from there jump back into Airtable, automations create a new automation like i've done here we always use the same trigger on this channel or like mostly so very few exceptions that i can remember when a record matches conditions and the condition is find matches is checked then we run a script now the script is also the same if you watched any of our videos this is the same exact script that we use all the time what you need to make sure though you can copy this whole script but change this url just copy paste the one that you fetched from here paste it in this little space between these two apostrophes now also don't forget to add your input variables record id capital r capital i underscore exactly as i've written in here and don't forget to match your value by pressing the blue button over here and then just matching this field airtable record id so that it prints like so once you're done press finish editing and the next thing that you need to do is make sure that you turn the automation on once you've done all of that you are basically ready to start sending data to make let's talk about what is going on with make now conceptually this is actually quite a straightforward automation what we have we have here one part that deals with putting all of our attributes together i think it's the attributes then we have all of our properties into one place right so that section deals with attributes this section deals with properties we have perplexity over here that is our ai model that does that matchmaking for us and then finally we have this section over here that makes sure that we take the answer from perplexity and actually push it back to Airtable. simple as that now let's take a closer look at this first section over here First thing we do is we actually fetch that record, that search record that triggered the whole automation, right? Just like so, I'm mapping my record ID as soon as it pops up over here. Once that's done, I'm actually setting a quick little variable, which kind of goes like this. If the strict requirements is checked, in other words, equals true, right? Then strict requirements, exact matches only, please. Essentially, I'm just printing a string. I'm creating that string. From there, I'm updating the record, that search record, with the like message to say that, hey, I'm starting up. This is just a nice to have so that the user of this system actually knows that something's happening and it's not like all broken. That's all there is to this particular little part. From there, let's talk about this little piece here where we set the variable name of the search 
then we have the applied attributes from number two in an iterator. We fetch those applied attributes and then we aggregate that in like so. I'm using a row separator other and the separator is a comma. I'm not grouping by anything, but I'm actually making sure that I'm fetching the names of the attributes that I've applied to that search. And I'm finally doing a quick little text aggregator over here where I'm printing the strict recs from earlier where we have the strict requirements text, the search ID and the search parameters, just like so. Super straightforward, nothing crazy. Now, the next thing is to actually fetch all the properties that we have in our system. So in this case, I'm just fetching all the properties. I'm not putting any filters or anything like that. The next step is to iterate through the applied attributes of every single property because our search records module here works as an iterator. So it will take one property at a time and pass it through this whole series of modules, one property at a time. So as soon as one property comes in, we fetch its attributes, we fetch each attribute one at a time, literally what we did right here, if you paid attention to that. And then we just aggregate it all in into a text, the number and the name into this nice little string. Same thing in terms of the row separator and all of that. Once we're done with that, press OK. And from there, we just aggregate that text into this sort of style of string. We have a double pipe, a space, property ID, and then the attributes. Simple as that. Press OK. From there, this is the meat and potatoes of the whole thing. Perplexity. This is how I've set up my prompt. It could be better. I feel like this can be improved to get even better results and more consistent results. But I'm using the Llama 3 70B instruct model. My first message is that you're a savant, real estate matchmaking robot, yada, yada, yada. And that's my system message. Then I'm giving it my property list and matching the text uh, from module number 25. We have our client search parameters. In other words, the parameters of the search, very small string, not a huge thing. And then we have our request. Please review the property list. Please review the client search parameters and so forth. Do not add any conversational language. That's basically it. My temperature is set to 0.2, no limitation on tokens. That's basically it. Now you can also play around with other AI APIs like ChatGPT would be fantastic for this. It can also take a lot more tokens, but yeah, this is what it is. Perplexity is cool. I like it. I feel like it's more centered. It's not as all over the place as ChatGPT can be sometimes if you don't prompt it well. But this works fairly well, even with a weak, so to speak, prompt. Now, once perplexity gives us an answer, its answer will always look like this. Just show you. It looks like a string that contains the record IDs of the properties. Now, in this particular instance, we just have one. Now, what we need to do then is to make sure that we have an iterator that splits that answer by a comma and creates this array, this super basic array that we can just iterate through and we search for that record. Again, this could be done probably a little bit better in the sense that I can do just to get a record. I don't have to search for that record, but I feel like this is a nicer way of doing this because a search will ultimately not fail in the sense that it will probably tell you, hey, I found 10 of this record or I found none. If you were actually trying to get a record and for some dumb reason it found none, it would actually crash if you were just doing the get a record. Get a record needs a record ID. If you don't have a record ID over here, maybe perplexity didn't find any properties, it will crash. So that's why I'm using a, a search module here. And don't forget to make sure that there is a total number of bundles not equal to zero filter right after that search because we want to make sure that there is a result you, we found a property with that record id finally we're just aggregating the ids in a custom aggregator sources of course the iterator number 40 and that's it i'm just aggregating the ids that i fetch from module 41 that's it now 
Finally, final little module of our automation. It is the update a record. We want to update that search, right? With the properties that we found. And in this case, what we have is this. We have our search status complete. We are also matching the search status from module number 38 because we don't want to overwrite the previous search status. We want to see how long it took to go from uh, starting up to complete. And finally, I'm matching my properties like so. I'm using a map function. In that map, I have my array, and then I'm just getting the IDs like so. Very, very straightforward. Nothing to this, basically. And that's about it in terms of the automation setup. Super straightforward, nothing compared to what the previous iteration of this was with the make, respell, make again. It was too big for such a simple task. So that's it from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed this little combo of Airtable and Perplexity for real estate. I feel like it's a fantastic little stack. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. That's it. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.